So, uh, your name and, and a little bit about what you do, what you're doing now. My name is Troy Terpstra. I am living in Bellingham as a painter, uh, among other things. I am an artist. I'm an artist, an artiste, a painter. Yep, that's what I do. Uh, mostly oils and uh, some acrylics and pastels and, and whatnot. But uh, I was always a drawer first, so I think of myself primarily as a draftsman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a kid, you were you were drawing. Yeah, as a kid, uh, I I say that I learned to draw because of how much time I had to spend in church, because I was allowed to. Uh, I was allowed to draw while my father preached. So, wow. Yeah, but I had to draw. Uh, I had to draw things that were uh, associated with the sermon. But because my dad was a Calvinist, every sermon was about Jesus dying on the cross. So I got really good at drawing a very fast and detailed picture of Jesus dying on the cross, which I could submit as the to prove that I was paying attention. And then after that, I could draw bombers and tanks and things like that. So I'm, I'm really a speed drawer. My <laughs> real gift is Pictionary. <laughs> That's what. Wow. Yeah. Do you have any of those uh, speedy uh, Jesus on the cross pictures? Oh, I think there's probably a ten of them somewhere. But I, you, you turned them into your dad? No, my mom. My mom was the, to show that I've been paying attention. You know, like yeah, see, I was totally in tune. But it was easy because it was always about the same things. You've always drawn. Yeah, uh, and then when did it sort of change into? Um, I want to pursue this as like a really serious. Uh, well, endeavor. it kind of happened by accident. I was uh, I was living and working in the Skagit Valley as a um, at a migrant advocacy organization a few years ago, and uh, um, I got. I did, really quickly, I drew a big map on their wall, a mural of uh, Mexico. And this was a place where immigrants would come who didn't have housing, and, you know. And so there was already this little map, and I painted a bigger one. And it went really easy because it was just a map. But then there was this huge wall at the top of the stairs, and I thought, God, that was fun. I'd like to do it again. I never painted before, you know. But I, uh, I spent almost two full years doing the drawing for it. Like, I drew the whole thing and painted it. It was this huge wall, and uh, I didn't really have... I mean, I was working there part-time, but there, I was also kind of the resident artist, and they just gave me all the time I needed. And um, I was very much inspired by Diego Rivera, you know? And I had the idea of, like, this is a community place, so what's a, what's a painting that represents this community, both to the outside and to them, like, who are we, kind of a thing. And so I got to spend a long time doing it and then I kind of learned how to paint on that wall and it was uh, like a big uh, project and, and after that I was trying to go to Paris and I needed to make money so my friends uh, cut up all my sketchbooks and framed them mm -hmm. while I was finishing this painting and we had a, when the mural had its opening um, I also had my first art show with just all the things that had been laying around for years and uh, made wow. the money to go to Paris for a year. And then in Paris, I had a couple shows, and so that's kind of how it became came about. Did you know that they were doing that, or was that something that? No, yeah, I gave them permission. I was like, I didn't have time, but I knew I needed to make uh, have this show because this mural was getting done. But people come and look at it; they couldn't buy anything. So I just gave a largely of my sister-in-law. I just gave them a stack of these sketchbooks that I've been working on for years, doing this big painting. And uh, yeah, that's a bunch of I'm military. Doing. Bombing. No, no, <laughs> no this, was, uh, this was much later. Those, those had ceased. Fecundity's 
like a natural disaster. I had a lot of solitude. I did. I was in France, but I had a lot of solitude there. And I, I don't know. I think I, since then, been just kind of trying to develop technique, but I'm not so concerned about content. That's why mostly what I do now is musicians. Um, you can see um, these are actually both kind of musician pieces. Um, we'll get out of the way. No, that's fine. But um, musicians are, you know, I mean, it's just people in this posture of being passionate about something, being into something. But really, it's, a, it's an opportunity to kind of work out technique. So I do musicians, but I've been doing them in all kinds of different ways and with different, in different mediums and, you know, more realistic, more abstract, more figurative, more playful, like thick, impasto, paint, um, thin drawings. So I'm just kind of, I feel like I'm in a phase where I'm really exploring uh, material, which has been, which is really, which is fun, great. I feel like, uh, you know, yeah. Do you play music? No, but it, uh, I think this is how I participate in music, because I, uh, I don't. But I would like to. I love it. Music is very important to me. But I you sing? I mean, or, or I've heard you badly, <laughs> enthusiastically, yeah. but not well. Isn't that the most important <laughs> element of <laughs> maybe. enthusiasm? Well, arguably, <laughs> maybe not. But I, yeah, it's, yeah, it is very important to me, and so, um, and it's fun to portray musicians because musicians are. Doing things like this is, you know, I mean, there's a whole narrative that kind of pops out of this, where there's this mother pulling this wagon, and her children are there. And I love art that, um, you know, painting that has some kind of narrative to it. Like, yeah. I think it's because my first love is really theater, and so I love the idea of a story and scenes being scenes from a story, or there being, you know, think about who this character is and that kind of thing. So how much? How long do you work on a painting before, if you, you know, before you kind of. Yeah. Say, all right, that's the end, end of it. Does that that's make sense? That's a good question. Well, because some of these paintings, like, here's a painting, for example, Exhibit A. It's a this painting came out of a, what I thought was a really good idea. Um, it's actually based on improvisation a little bit, in jazz, though, not theater. All the bodies are curvy. Um, and the instruments are straight. You have all the lines kind of shooting out of this spot. So what thought was like a really good idea, but somehow I started this painting a long time ago and I haven't been able to finish it. I haven't been able to like push through because the, when I change one thing, I feel like another thing needs changing. So that's a, an example of me not embracing the ideas of improvisation, <coughs> of thinking like just doing it and being done with it instead of thinking like, um, I don't know. It, it's such, there's so much potential to the idea that you don't finish it because you see what it maybe could be. And that's a really crippling idea. Like uh, the idea of thinking of a painting as potentially really, really good is a, is a real problem because then it can never be what it actually is, which is, you know, who knows what, but, but never some ideal. And, and in live theater people, especially in improv, People are watching you make up what you're doing, which is such a thrilling thing, but also like, you know, they, wa they get to watch you screw up. And in painting, you can be, you can really choose what, you pre what parts of the creative process you present to people. So you don't have to let people in to the messy side of fucking everything up and, and, and doing and doing making horrible mistakes and doing something that's embarrassingly bad. You can put all that stuff in the closet and just show them the stuff that you're satisfied with. I think in that sense improv is a much more vulnerable um, art form. Like painting you can really be withdrawn and mysterious and separated as the creator. I mean, right? Do you have a vision or a place that you want to go with your art? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, I mean, I think in as much as I have a personal narrative and I have things that I really believe, I would like my art to explore those and represent those things. But I don't think I'm there yet. I think, I think mastery of the material comes first. It's like if I was a composer for the violin or something, like there might be some 
epic piece that I would like to compose that would really mean a lot. But until I really have the scales down, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that. And I think with painting it's the same way right now. Like, I need to learn the scales, you know, I need to learn how to do anything, how to use paint and, and represent objects first really well. And once I have those skills, then I can start thinking of kind of grander visions. But that's why, that's why I do so many musicians and, and again, just like little characters, you know, because I think right now I, I, you know, I just need to practice my scales. Before we started this, about uh, kind of having a couple of projects going that helps you kind of either transition or never get stuck in in either oh, I can't finish this or oh, I can't start this. Yeah. How does that um, talk I, a little bit about that? I think yeah, you have to. I uh, again, everybody works differently, but I need to. I need to be having several things going so that. Um, Sometimes if I feel st if I feel stuck in one place, I can I can turn to another. I can start a new thing, and uh, and uh, I have I have a problem finishing off sometimes. But they say actually I don't know that that's great advice though because it's been said that uh, I think Hemingway never like always finished always left off a day's work in the middle of a sentence. Is that true? I don't know. Maybe. But the idea that you leave off, Annie Dillon says the same thing when you write, you leave off when you know where you're going, so that when you come back into it, you can kind of get right back into that flow. I don't do that. I kind of go until I get just sick of something, and then this is probably why I have like 10 unfinished paintings. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, I'm not a, I got a lot to learn to do. So. You, you had talked about food and energy and, and stuff. What helps you? What's a food that helps you paint or gets you through? I go to the shoe like, uh, Three times a week, and I eat uh, like pretty early in the morning, so that I I get early lunch, and I'll have bacon and eggs and uh, hash browns and English muffin, and then about six cups of coffee a day, and that's pretty much it. Then soup, the co-op. Yesterday, I, I had a great experience watching a movie while I painted. If it's a movie I've already seen, I really like listening to movies, like that I know already. It's kind of like listening to an album. If you already know the movie, though, it makes it easier to see. Yeah, you don't want to have to look away all the time. You want to kind of be able to... Jurassic Park? I'd love to just listen to Jurassic oh, Park. The original? Yeah. It's a great movie. I've never even seen the other ones. <laughs> Me neither. I, I don't want to. I know I'll hate it. I don't want to either. I heard they're really bad. <laughs> da, 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 yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, how do you measure, like, or do you kind of measure your success as an artist or as a painter? And I mean... Oh man, I don't even think about it. I'm not very successful because, in a certain sense at all, because uh, in a certain sense to be successful as a painter you have to really understand the business world and how to market yourself and all that. I'm really lousy with that. It's, it's you know, it's fun to, it's wonderful to try to to live doing what you love to do, I think. But uh, I'm really not able to do that yet. Because <laughs> I'm too slow, and I'm too... and I'm a lousy self-marketer. There's an artist who did a... who did a, a friend of mine in Seattle who does what he calls um, Marketing Mondays. He spends every Monday making all the phone calls and doing all the self-promotion stuff. And he said that's made the whole difference as far as like being able to make a living. I have the business sense, though. Are you thinking about starting a marketing Wednesday or something? No. Not to cut? <laughs> no. How would you go about it? I, mean, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't care. I still eat. I've never missed a meal. You know? I have a warm bed and I eat. You know, so I, I guess I don't know what else there is. <laughs> but as far as your art, is it out? It, you would like more people to see it, I guess. Not necessarily. Really? I mean, it's kind of sad when people buy your pieces because you never see them again. 
I mean, Van Gogh lived his life and he got to keep all of his pieces. Then he died, and then they all became famous. I think that's the way to do it. <laughs> so you could have eaten at the horseshoe for the rest of your life, have a shitload of awesome art. If I eat at the horseshoe, I won't live very much longer because that's very fatty food. I don't know. I, you know, it would be nice to have a car or something like that, but I don't know. Whatever. You just, you know, you just try to do what you love to do. If you can survive, then that's great. Things are okay. <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to get married and have a kid, though. If I can get a real job to do something like that. Why do you really? Yeah. I don't think so. It's a terribly expensive thing to have a child nowadays. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. Like if you if you have a child now, like that's what you're doing. That's your that's what you do now. You have a child, and like everything in your universe is now about that child like it didn't used to be like that if like, you could just like have a child and keep doing what you were doing like angry bird would you want to have a wife's child if that was possible yeah i think so yeah it'd be great i think of this painting behind you as kind of the uh, single man's I idea of the idyllic domestic life <laughs> Although in reality, it's a hellhole. <clears throat> the they're, family, right? They're both drinking coffee. The, the kid, both kids are drinking tea. No, it's the mother and the eldest daughter are drinking tea. Oh. Kind of well, tea and the father's. Is that working? I don't know where the father is. Probably. Or is he taking? Is this from his view? It's actually the painting is for a father. It's a gift for a father, from a wife with two children. I have to deliver it. It's long overdue. I could live with that. I mean, that, that looks like a nice Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it's bullshit, but it does look nice. And maybe it's not bullshit. I like to think maybe it's not bullshit. Maybe it's... Uh, that the kid's reading? Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> the kids don't read it. I should have had her texting, right? Right. <laughs> she's got, she's got an iPad. You know, Play Angry Birds. That sucks. <laughs> if you had a kid... And, you, and, you, and he was like, I want to be an artist. Four words. Don't be afraid to imitate the masters. That was, that was seven more than words. words. <laughs> Don't be afraid to imitate. That's what I want to say. I actually do want to say that. Go ahead. There's an obsession and, and art with, with originality. And it's an idiotic yeah. obsession because it makes it impossible to do anything. You can only... Um, learn to do anything by imitation. So if you want to become a painter, really what you should do is go out and find who you want to paint like and try to make those paintings exactly. And say, fuck, fuck originality. Originality ruins art. It really interrupts it. Because, because this is the only way human beings can learn to do anything is by, is by, imitating, by imitating people. Originality, if it exists at all, is kind of an accident and something that you you shouldn't even ever really be concerned about because it happens maybe later but you want to learn how to paint I mean we understand this intuitively in some art forms like if you want to learn the violin you don't pick up the violin and be like I'm just going to do whatever you know it sounds terrible no one wants to hear that you have to learn to play the violin in this by somebody who knows how to play it and then but with painting we don't want to say that we want to say you know you just go out and you feel it and you do something that's never been done and that's why modern painting is so boring and absurd and alienates so many people and so i would say you know you know i love picasso so i'm trying to do you know paintings that like he did them and if i can do that then that's great and maybe you don't stop there but the you know, I mean, not like I'll ever, I'll never be, that's not what I mean, but I mean, you know, you find other people to imitate from also, but, yeah. As a painter, you have to imitate, and you should, um, you should, you should, yeah. Cool. Fuck originality. Say that again. Say that again to the camera. Fuck originality. <laughs>
Yeah. Awesome. Here goes. Quelque chose en français. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire ça? C'est exactement ce que tu m'as dit à dire. <laughs> voilà. So let's get out of here. Pass the atmosphere. Squint your eyes and no one dies and goes to jail. Pass the silver bridge over the silver.